Hello, ladies, gentlemen, and otherwise. I'm Lamar Haven. Welcome back to Professor Layton and the Last Spectre. When last we left our heroes, well, they're going to tell us. Crow tells Layton that the flute he is looking for was auctioned off to Evan Bard a year ago. The Professor, Emmy, and Luke decide to make their way to Bard Manor. Chapter 5 The Witch's Castle. This is High Art Hill? Wow, all the houses are huge! Yes, this does seem to be qu quite a nice residential area. The police station is nearby, as is the excavation site where they were searching for the Golden Garden. It sure is nice to have Luke as a tour guide, isn't it, Professor? It certainly is helpful. Now let's move on to Bard Manor. So, we need to get the... Our only clue as to what's going on with the Spectre is the flute that supposedly controls it. Well, our only lead thus far is that it went to the... Uh, it was sold from the Black Market. In Searching the Black Market, we found out that the kids of town run it. And they said that they sold the, uh, the flute to bar uh to uh, the former master of bard manor otaki san i did some research on the specter and i found out some pretty interesting things in the legend it says the specter existed to protect the town which got me thinking what if someone made the specter mad if we upset its nerves i think this is a warning to us all the destruction of the town is only the beginning Wow, you're pretty intense for a kid. I forgot how superstitious you people you are. We're living in a digital age now, and some people still pretend like we live in some analog age. My favorite analog things are clocks. Check it out. It's like checking the time in the past. Puzzle number 42. Angle time. Worth 55 picarets. Have you ever noticed that throughout the 24 hours of the day, there are special times, like 111, at which the same digit appears three times in a row? If you take these special times and measure the angle going clockwise from the hour hand to minute hand, excluding angles where 12 lies between the two hands, which time has the greatest angle? Obviously the angle between the hands in times like 001, 0001, and 0009 is tiny, so you can ignore those from the start. Hmm. Okay. So, first we need to figure out all the places where you get triple digits. Uh, 11, 19 is probably the furthest that way we can go. Then you also have 10 o'clock straight up. Danny! Hello! Been a while. I'm early. No, I'm not. 10 a.m. I was... <laughs> you might have noticed I was streaming earlier, but that's because I made an error and pressed the wrong button in OBS. But no, I'm not early. Remember, I operate on PST, and I, uh, and I stream 10 a.m. PST. Let's see. Uh, this one's actually pretty tough, because there's a lot of combinations you get. Clocks went back? Did they? Oh, all mine must have automatically done that. Must have automatically fell back. I didn't know they did that today. Whoops. I wonder I felt a little tired this morning. <laughs> Whenever my sleep schedule, even if I get more sleep, I feel more tired because things are at a odd, odd place. Oh, they did there? Hmm. I don't think they did here in the U.S. If they did, then well, they should have. Now that I think about it, I'm, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm confused. I don't know when the when the fallback is supposed to happen. I, usually, I get some sort of indication that it is. All right, so if we go. Excluding angles where the 12 lies between the two hands. Take these special times and measure the angle going clockwise from the hour hand to minute hand. Alright, so you can't get three nines in a row. You can't get three eights in a row. You can't get three sevens in a row. 
can't get three sixes in a row. So these are all cut out. To get 555, you would need our hand here and that there. To get 444, actually, don't these all make straight lines in weird ways? No, they don't. So I think 555 is actually the best, because if you go clockwise from the hour... Okay, go clockwise from the hour to the minute hand, yeah. So it might be 555. Let's go ahead and put that in. I'm so glad I recognized those as fives. How about this? Nope. Some puzzles are simply impossible. Some puzzles are simply impossible? That's not the Luke Triton we know! How- No! No, Luke, of course they're possible. Alright, so 555, 444, 333 would be something like this, and that definitely won't work. 222 would be like that, or that. So that doesn't work. So yeah, it kind of has to be 555, doesn't it? Unless... Hmm. Erase, erase, erase. No it, no, it doesn't, though, uh, Danny, because it says clockwise from the hour hand to the minute hand. So if I go 555, like this, then it says, then you would go like that to measure the angle. So no, the 12 doesn't lie in between. I'm gonna mark 555 again. Just because that's the one that I think works, and for some reason it doesn't. Uh, you can't get 666, can't get 777, can't get 888, can't get 999. All the tens. Ah, but what about ones that are 12? 1222. Because then it won't be in between anything. 1222 would be like that, which is still smaller. Hmm. Oh, but we're talking about a 24 hour day, aren't we? Shit. So then I have to consider 1333. So 13.33 is sort of like that. 14.44... Oh god, this makes everything awful. Okay, 14.44... is like that. 15.55... It... Oh, it's gotta be 15.55. This is right. Yeah. Alright, I need to get it. up for a sec. Apparently the dog has found something he needs to bark at. So I will be right back.
Okay. I have no idea how this happened. <laughs> Alright, so little details. Uh, first, my parents' dog is about chihuahua-sized. Uh, second, my mom has a uh, garden in the backyard that's fenced off with about a waist-high fence. I go out back, and the dog is yelping like a little, uh, like it's been hit or something. And I'm wondering what the hell is wrong. And I notice he's on the other side of the garden fence. How he got there, I have no idea. He must have jumped the fence somehow. <laughs> Had to get him out. So that's why he was barking. And hopefully he won't do that again. Because if he does that when nobody's home, he's going to be stuck there for a while. Alright, the answer is 1555 on an analog clock. 355 and 1555 look the same, but only one is three identical digits. 24 hour clock didn't stump you. It did it first. Alright, ooh, a new toy train course. Because <laughs> he's yelping because he's stuck and scared. Yeah, exactly. That dork. Ugh. <laughs> An old friend gave this to me. You go ahead and take it. That thing looks really old. That's why it's cool. When you're older, you'll wish you had you would have kept the, all your vintage stuff. Oh god, the hair. The hair is pretty interesting. All right, let's go ahead and try the toy tra train course. I've got them all done so far. Just look at this course. The simplicity of the design. The straight lines. The symmetry. And you want to mess it up by having a second track run all over it? You'll need some lateral thinking for that. Yep, this is gonna hurt. Um... Alright, let's see if that does it. So the two trains are going to run simultaneously. We only get to control where one of them will end up going. However, if they cross over like they're about to, yep, they crash and you don't get credit. So obviously this is not as easy as it looks. This is gonna be weird. I don't, and I think it's going to immediately crash. Yep, immediately crashes. Oh, the fact that you have to figure it out like this. Oh god. All right. Well, let's start by going up, maybe. No, this is awful. This won't work because now I can't move anywhere. There's only so many options of what you can do. And that was what I started with. That might work. Ideally, this will make it so that, yeah, the three train is going to get all the way to the end and complete its journey well before we get to where we need to go. Cool. You've completed Mr. Otaki. Cool. That wasn't too hard. They're going to get worse, though. That's the first time they've introduced two uh, trains in the same map, in the same puzzle, though. So they're only going to make it worse. Whoa, look at this view, Professor. This is the Grand Plaza. It's nice. What's that up there? That's the dam. Our banner is just a little beyond that. Mr. Otaki. Yep, that's the name of the character. Oh, it said Mount? Oh, my bad. Mount Otaki. But it, the dude who gave it to us was Otaki-san. So I... I I should. It, it was an easy mistake to make. I would love to see a schematic of the town's waterways someday. In fact, we should see it soon because we have a feeling that it's related to the Spectre.
It's quite staggering. All right, we'll talk to the lady. I heard this is a sleepy little hamlet, but now there's a huge giant terrorizing everyone? What kind of bait and switch is that? I feel cheated. So, you've seen the specter. If I saw it, at least that would be something exciting. But the cops made us evacuate the area. I hear it appears randomly, but someone must have seen it, right? It still hasn't hit the same area twice. It's like lightning. It's strange, it's almost like it's searching for something. Maybe it has a little sibling or something. Interesting. It would then be searching for something its own size if that were the case. Says who? My friend's brother is like nine times her size. Maybe that's a bit of an exaggeration, but I see what you're getting at. Making assumptions about the size of its sibling. Of course, you're making assumptions that a sibling exists. Come back here! Yay, six mouse bas badges! I have no idea what those do still. An exquisite garden positively blooms with its owner's love. The flowers in that shrub smell gorgeous. Oopsies. Look, a butterfly. They've had problems with sinkholes there. Why is this so close to a residential area? To an archaeologist, dig sites have their own unique appeal. Nothing? Okay, I guess we're leaving here. A dig site, though, huh? My dad is the police chief. He knows more than those cops in London. So you better respect me. Because of your father? Just look at that angle. It's completely bent out of shape. This area is still one of the safer places in town. I wonder if that was caused by the specter. That's where Mr. Grek lives, huh? Interesting. Oh hey, it's another one of the lazy policemen. It really, it really does loom over the whole town. The flag requires a strong wind for it to flutter proudly. Welcome to the Miss Dallary Police Station. Please state your business. The chief helps the weak and puts the strong in their place. His third eye sees all, I tell you. Not convinced, but look at this. Puzzle number 43, Armor Antics, for 30 picarets. Somebody threw on this suit of armor in the exact same attire they're wearing now and put a dent in the helmet. All you need is a close look at the perpetrator to find out who it is. Which of these four lads was it? I want to say C because he's the only one who wouldn't have been hit, but A clearly has a bump on his head. Wait. He would have had to wear it backwards. Huh. So it can't be A, unless he was wearing it backwards, and I don't think he did. So who can I not see the left part of their head? B. A challenging puzzle, to be sure. No? Am I overthinking this? What could have gone wrong here? If it was A, he'd have to be wearing it backwards. Totally wasn't. If it was D, I guess he's covering up that part of his head, but then by that logic it would also have to be B. Because... i covering up the left side of his head. So then the only one who hasn't taken a hit is C, but he obviously doesn't fit in the... in the suit. Some puzzles must be met directly. Nope. Guess we're doing try uh A little error. more thought is in order. I don't want to say A, it's too obvious. This took some creative thinking. No puzzle is without an answer. So he was covering up the bump. Really? Is that all? Culprit was D. There was a bump on his head matching dent in the helmet, but he was hiding it with his hand. Really? Fine. 
And that's how he exposed them. I don't even need to investigate crime scenes anymore. Oh, I do wonder what happened to the homes that got attacked by the Spectre. They're being repaired by Grep. Another cop. I thought we were trying to discourage tourists these days. The Spectre's making quite a fuss, if you haven't noticed. Good thing I'm on the job. I'm sure the Spectre business will be over soon. I, for one, can't wait to be able to sleep through the night again. Say, maybe you can help me out. Puzzle number 44, family portraits with 30 picarettes. These portraits show five generations of the same family. Each generation shares only one particular facial feature with the next generation. The portrait above, the Roman numeral one, is the first in the series. Put the remaining portraits in chronological order. They share one feature. One facial feature. Eyebrows, eyes, eyebrows, eyes and eyebrows. Hmm. I have a feeling it's more complicated than that. Because there's a lot of combinations that make sense. This combination makes sense, just like this combination makes sense. Eyebrow, eyebrow, nose, nose, eyes, eyes. And then this guy matches with eyebrows. Shares only, oh, only one particular feature. That's a little more complicated, yeah. All right, so I need someone, hmm. All right, you, funny mouth guy. Uh, only match eyes. Okay. Only match nose. Only match, no, you match eyes and nose. You match mouth. No eyes, no nose, no eyebrows. You match eyebrows, and nothing else. So that works. How about this? That puzzle wasn't so hard. Dad's right. I wonder what features they share with the current generation. Well, why didn't I think of that? Right then, back to work. Thanks for your help. Good luck with your investigation. Alright, it's beat feet. Drew. Oh, hey, it's going. Alright, good. That's everything here. Intriguing. So, this is how the land lies. I think the lake would be so this big. The boat piers are here, 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 and up here. So many colors, I don't know which I'd pick. How does one manage to keep track of all these boats? You must have one for every occasion. Maybe the color has something to do with it. Uses the color to keep track of them all. It says, Bucky gets you where you want to be in a flash. Did Bucky write that one himself? Bucky is a man of details. I'll bet he pays as much attention to his signs as he does his boats. That reminds me, I've got a puzzle for you, Professor. Puzzle number 45, Sign Flipper, with 30 picarettes. The cafe's sign has been turned around. The sign is made up of nine panels. When one panel is turned over, the adjacent panels turn over with it. Touch your panels to turn them all around to display the sign correctly. Interesting, one of these puzzles. Some puzzles must be met directly. Oops, did I finish that too quickly? I love the thrill of a good solution. <laughs> did you blink and miss it? Correct! One possible solution is to touch panels in a fouling order. Center, top left, top, uh, top right, top left, bottom left, bottom right. Just in time for t a cup of tea. That's not how I did it, but I think mine was almost as fast. 
What did you think? Just the thing to get those brain cells working. If you ever need a puzzle, pick me up. Just ask, Professor. Guess we're moving on. Kint coin. Big damn little bridge. Mm, pretty good composition. This looks like a good sturdy bridge. Ah, uh, tourists line up for photos here. Well, what a wood well-crafted dam. So this is how water flows in the town. That explains the full canals. The dam is quite a marvel. It looks like a fortress. Quick, man the turrets! There's a lot of water behind that. Ooh! A puzzle! Oh, damn. <laughs> Another hidden puzzle, if I'm not mistaken. Number 152, either or. Oh, 20 picarettes. A weary old sailor is describing a special tool for use when he's out in the boat. Sometimes when I'm out in my boat on a fine warm day, I get so tired, so I dig out a special tool. Suddenly I don't have to lift a finger to move my boat. You think it, it might think it's unfair, but nobody minds helping out an old man like me. What tool are you th uh, is he talking about? Hmm. Nobody minds helping out an old man like me, which means he's probably using somebody else's assistance. That kind of strikes me as C. Use it to maybe put like a... because there's a seal here, so obviously I think that's the hint, is that he's like using an animal to help pull him or something. Let's see. This took some creative thinking. Nope. It appears as though I've missed something. It makes it so I don't have to do any work at all except set it up and go. I'm assuming that these are pretty big sized items too, and that might not be true. Obviously, it's not D, because that would just mean more rowing. But what the heck is A? A sort of looks like things you would use for, like, either tending wounds and that you see in anime and stuff a lot, or <laughs> things to clear out your ear. Uh, B strikes me as something that might be interesting. it might be E because you would sit down on it, but you already can sit down in a boat. That's not new. And he says the boat moves. Some puzzles must be met directly. No puzzle is without an answer. Ah, that makes more sense. I see. You're right. That's the tool I use when I want to sit back and let somebody else tow the boat for me. I just hook it over the edge of the e each boat, easy as that. That brings us up to speed. This dam. There's something about this dam. Oh dear. Whoa, well at least this place isn't dilapidated or off and ostentatious. I'll need to go up the stairs. Kitty! Wow. Have I missed any puzzles, Keats? Nope. Thank you, Keats. It's all covered in creepers. Creepy. The garden has gone untended for a while, it seems. They used to be really nice. Man, this place is overgrown as all heck. It's not working. That's a sorry excuse for a windmill. It certainly contributes to the gloomy atmosphere. Very gloomy. Uh-oh, found a puzzle. It's a shame to leave these magnificent grounds untended. It could have been the place for a perfect garden. It used to be. It was fallen apart since Mr. Bard's death. Well, we'll have to make our way through the reach to, to, through to reach the manor. 
Puzzle number 46, Overgrown Garden, worth 50 picarettes. The garden at Bard Manor has grown so thick that it's nearly impassable. Fortunately, a sign tells you how to navigate your way through it. It reads, Walk on every square in the garden only once, going in numerical order from 1 to 8. And can you get to the goal from one of the starting points? Can you get to the goal from one of the starting points? Ooh. That actually raises an interesting question. Can you? Alright, so I think our, our... Honestly, the best option is to work backwards. So, seven, six, five. And then we have two fours. And it says to go from 1 to 8, so I can't go 4 to 5 to 6 again. So if I go this way, 3... Oh! No way! 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Walk on every square in the garden. Oh, right. Of course. So then we can't use this one. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3... 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 8, 7, nope. We can't do that. Five, four, three, two, one, eight, seven, six. But this cuts all this off, which we can't do. So erase all. We'll start from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we're stuck. You know, I'm just going to go this way. Not use the memo system. Nope, that leaves the one and two over here completely yet unused. I can't do this path. Not that way, at least. Can't do it that way, either. So, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Everything stepped on once. This took some creative thinking. I love the thrill of a good solution. Correct. By starting at the entrance on the left side of the garden, it's possible to step through every inch series in order. Head to Bard Manor. Ooh, a new action. Scrubbed. Right, here we are. Let's move on. Ack! Wait, Professor, I'm caught on this bush! Are you alright, Emmy? Hang on! Ow, ow, ow! It's better, better be worth it! With a little bit of work, one could grow anything in this rich soil. No sense in lingering here. Let's move on. Hmm. I wonder what that scene was about. Her getting caught. I love the vintage goth decor! The cobwebs must have cost a fortune. Look, do people really live here? Of course they do. I think. What's that? Did you see something, Mr. Layton? Hmm. Let's find the front door. I found the front door! It's right there. Now let me look at everything else. Alright, I found the front door. Well, looks like no one is home, right, Professor? <laughs> Quick to leave, Emmy. Hold on, Emmy. I'm sure I saw someone in one of the windows upstairs. What? Then that is horribly creepy. Oh, what if this calamity witch is actually a ghost? Emmy, behind you! Oh, right, Luke. I'm not falling for that. Ah! <laughs> Oh my god, he has the most terrifying beard of all! What do you young uns want? Pardon me, sir. My name is Herschel Layton. 
Is Ariana home? What business is that of yours? We are investigating the spectre. And who might you be? Who do I look like? I'm the gardener, Seamus. You're the worst gardener ever. The mistress has no interest in meeting with the likes of you. Now, go away! Did that seem strange to you, Emmy? Which part? The garden is in disarray, despite having a gardener. Do you think he is just poor at his vocation? No, he's lying. I heard that Mr. Bard's servants were all let go after his death. So that must be the w woman we're looking for in disguise. So, do you think this fake gardener is holding Ariana hostage? No, it definitely was Ariana because the voice itself sounded like it was a woman's just trying to disguise it as a man's. That is possible, I suppose. We must find a way in there. What should we do, Mr. Layden? Hmm. Alright, guess we're looking around. Ooh. Amazing, how does a tree end up there? It could have picked any other place to grow, but no. Plants and humans alike cannot change where they are born. Give me whatever's in here. Thank you, hint coin. Professor, I think we can get in through this tower. We can get inside if we cross the bridge at the top of the tower. You two seem quite eager to go breaking into Bod Manor. A young girl could be in danger. This is our, your duty as an English gentleman, Professor. You can't just turn your back on this, can you, Mr. Layton? Of course not. Let's go. Come on, hurry! However, if he has a strong suspicion that she's not actually in danger, then isn't that non-gentleman-like behavior for him to break in? It's a mushroom! Being next to the lake, the humidity is probably quite high. It's clearly not the kind of mushroom one should eat. I don't know how you determine that, actually. Ooh. Oh, I guess we're getting rid of some of that. Professor, look! It keeps going up! Yes, that's how towers work. Ah, oh, darn it. <laughs> it's another hidden puzzle. Come now, a counter to try. Puzzle number 153, two pictures with 40 picarettes. A rich man has the strange habit of hanging the paintings in his house in such a way that it's possible to tell how much the paintings are worth. In section 1, the paintings have a total value of $2 million. In 2, the paintings have a combined value of $6 million. How many millions of dollars are the two paintings in section 3 worth? Hmm. I'm gonna bust out my notepad. Just in case. Alright, in section 1, the two paintings have a total value of two million dollars. Does it have to do with the colors, maybe? No, I think it has to do with their position and how far along the 1 and 2 they are. Because the first one is off the, uh, is off the screen to the left. It's so far to the left that it's probably worth way less than the one on the bottom. So... Hmm. No. Hmm. Rich man has a strange habit of painting the paintings in his house in such a way it's possible to tell how much the paintings are worth. Section 1, the two paintings have a total value of 2 million, and 2, they have 6 million. The third one is worth nine million. That's a two. That's six. That's a nine. <laughs> no, that's clearly a nine. Clearly a nine. Thank you, game. A challenging puzzle, to be sure. 
No puzzle is without an answer. Exactly! The two paintings in Section 3 have a combined value of $9 million. That's very interesting pieces. Few things are more satisfying than a puzzle solved. I gotta say, when I actually find out, these, figure out these puzzles, I do feel proud of myself. I'll be honest. Puzzles are never been, have never been my thing. So, being able to figure them out... Oh dear! There's writing on the wall. 4123 is what it said. Wow, what a view! You can see the lake, the town, everything! This must have been a lookout tower. It probably hasn't been used in many years. Can we get to that walkway I saw for earlier from here? Strange. From outside, it looks like we look like we can get there from here. Hmm? Emmy, what is written on that wall over there? Oh, is it a clue? Let me take a closer look here. Four, one, two, three. And it looks like there are torches above each. Is it graffiti? It's not the witch's mark, I can tell you that. There are numbers. Four, one, two, three. I love clues! Let me jot this down. Let me do so as well. But what is above the numbers? Are those flames? Four numbers and drawings of flames. What could this mean? That's a difficult one. It's only difficult because we don't have all the information yet. Whoa. Okay, there we go. Find that hint coin. What a splendid view! This calls for a photo! The mist rolling over the hills is an elegant sight to behold. I'd like to come back here when it's nice day, too. I can't see anything else to do up here. Hmm. I can't recall a place that had those flames. Oh! Never mind. Duh! These seem to be gas torches. I don't even need a match to light them. You know, suppose those torches are some sort of puzzle. Very uh, sharp observation, Luke. The torches may be our key here. You think so, Professor? Tap an alcove to light it. Tap them in the correct order to solve the puzzle. G. Four, one, two, three. No. Ah, oh, the flame went out. Let's try again. No. Ah, oh, the flames went out. So there's more to it than that. Let's go back up to the top. It's clearly a 4123. Oh! I get it. I'm an idiot. Leave me alone! <laughs> One, two, three, four. <laughs> Leave me alone! Wasn't that. It, it was hard, I swear! I just heard something above us. Let's go check it out. Huh, a secret door. Professor, this entryway wasn't here before. As I suspected, the torches. That must lead to the sky passage. I must say, I certainly didn't expect such an elaborate device. I wish I could have watched it as it opened up. Yep, looks like we're inside the man mansion, covered in cobwebs. Ugh, hate it. Oh god, we need to solve a puzzle to get through the door, don't we? This door should lead to the main path part of the house. Wait, Luke, there's something odd about this door. The lock is some sort of puzzle. Professor, may I? Puzzle number 47, the terrace door with 40 picarettes. Oh, to open the lock of this door, you must enter the correct numbers. To the right of the doorknob is a set of equations. Each symbol represents a unique single-digit number. If you solve the equations, you'll determine which symbol represents each number, and you'll have your key. 
Touch the numbers to change them. Okay. Each one represents a unique number. Star times star equals club. So... Star has to be less than or equal to three. Because if it equals a single digit number, then it has to equal club, which is a nine or a, a four. So, because star times star can't be one, because if you have one times one, you'll only get one. So star is equal, is either two or three. Star times club, so that means two times four would equal eight. So we can't have that, because it becomes a two-digit number. So star has to be three, and club has to equal nine. So three times nine is 12. That means diamond... Blech. I don't know how to write, uh, how to draw diamonds, apparently. Equals one. Wait, hold on. Three times eight. My bad, 27, duh. So diamond equals two, and a spade equals seven. So seven times moon equals circle triangle. Hmm. That's... Okay, um, I see how we're supposed to figure this out. Because we have two, seven, three, and nine all taken already. So, two, seven, three, and nine are all taken. So, seven times four is 28, so it can't be that. Seven times five is 35, so it can't be that. So, seven times six is 42, which we can have. 7 times 7 is 49, can't have that. 7 times 8 is 41, 28, 56, which we could have. So 7 could also be times 8. Alright, so it's either 7 times 6. Or 56. 42 or 56 is our answer. No, it can't be 42. My bad. So it has to be 56. So that means moon is 8. And upside down triangle is 6. I think this is right. I hate math. I knew I could do it. Correct. Crescent is 8 and triangle is 6. Star times star is single digit answer, so star must be 1, 2, or 3. However, since 1 times 1 would be 1, we'd eliminate that. If star were 2, club would be 4. But the next equation, 2 times 4, would not produce a two digit number. Therefore, star is 3, club is 9, diamond is 2, and spade is 7. After that, just try unused numbers to fill in the other symbols and find the correct values, which is exactly what I did! Holy crap, I actually followed the logic of the puzzle perfectly! I got it, Professor! Nice work, Luke! That was actually a pretty decent puzzle. I mean, I hate math, but the puzzle itself is good for teaching the basic logic of how uh, variables and stuff work in math and multiplication. This place is huge. Does Ariana really live here all alone? It hardly looks like there's anyone living here at all. You think there are ghosts here? Don't say that, Emmy. What is that over on the wall? That's a picture of Ariana. It must have been taken a while ago. Who is this in the picture with her? That was her brother, Tony. And where is he now? I'm not sure. And there is no sign of him either. Perhaps he is with Ariana. That's great. They look so happy. 
Uh oh, puzzle in the chandelier. When was the last time someone cleaned up around here? Look at those cobwebs hanging from the chandelier. I hate spiders, ugh. Now, Emmy, spiders are fascinating creatures. Take a look at this. Puzzle number 48, crawling the web, 35 picarets. A spider made a very intricate web. When its prey gets stuck at A, the spider starts from the center and takes thread 2 or 5 to get to it. If to get to the prey at B, the spider uses thread 1 or 2 starting at the center. The spider is a simple rule. Following the rules starting from the spider, what two threads could the spider take to get to C? Alright, so if you take 2 to get to uh, prey at A, Let's see what happens if you take every single right turn. Yep, it's every single right turn. I'll bet if I take five, I'll do the same thing. No. Okay, so it's not every single right turn, maybe it's just every single turn? This is a pretty classic puzzle, though, you would find every once in a while. The, uh, I, I don't know what to, what to call them. I hesitate to call them spiderweb puzzles, but if you go to five and just take every first turn you find... Yep, you'll get to A. So, it's just take every turn. Let's get to C and see how you would go if you went this way. So backwards and take every turn. It would be four. This way, this way, this way. Uh, what? No, that doesn't make any sense. That th that's because I would take this path. <laughs> so two and four. Wait, what? That's not right. No, it is. Okay. I see. Oops, no, I'm fine. I see how that works. Okay. So, two and four. I think oh, I've wait! This I didn't actually click anything. <laughs> Whoopsie! I need to look at that again. I... <laughs> that was just me not understanding where I was supposed to hit the submit button. What do you think about this? Darn it, and I got that it right too. Was no problem. Would have gotten all the picarets. Perfect. From wherever the spider starts, it always travels outward and toward uh, and turns wherever it meets another connecting thread. Oh goody! It's lunchtime. I never thought you'd be afraid of spiders, Emmy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, ugh. <laughs> Well, if you're going to be an archaeologist's assistant, we may need to work on that a bit, I mean. I suppose not being afraid of spiders in areas where you'd be finding a lot of spiders would be useful. Guess I'll never be an archaeologist. Children's toys? There are toys everywhere, and this area of the, uh, of the mansion looks completely clean. Downright spotless except for the toys lying around. Who scattered them all about? Ariana? This is more like toys a boy would typically enjoy. So the caretaker plays with toys? That doesn't make any sense. And would also be very weird. There's a name on this toy car. Tony! So where is Tony? We haven't found anyone in this house. Perhaps he went out for something. Oh, a teddy bear. Looks a bit worn though. Every toy was very carefully crafted. Hmm. This may be Ariana's room. Let's find out! Ariana! Who are you? The 
those eyes don't look like they match up to the picture we saw earlier. I mean, obviously it doesn't make any sense that be Ariana to begin with, because shouldn't she be much older? Hmm. My name is Herschel Layton. I hope I didn't frighten you. Please believe me when I say I mean you no harm. You broke into my house to tell me that you mean me no harm? I know how this looks. Please forgive me. We do have a reason. Could we speak to you, with you for a bit? I'm listening. Is the gardener keeping you here against your will? Excuse me? I don't know what you're insinuating, but Seamus works here. I'm... I'm sorry. Looks like we made a terrible mistake. Yes, we may have been a bit hasty in our assumptions. My apologies. I'm sorry. Even though Leighton probably didn't make the same assumption as everyone else, he's still totally willing to apologize on their behalf and his own for, you know, going along with their assumptions, even though he knows they're probably not right. Fine. Just leave, please. We'll seek the Spectre's Flute elsewhere. Thank you. Wait, what? The Spectre's Flute? Your father, Mr. Bard, bought it in the Black Market a year ago. We think the Spectre is destroying the town and is being summoned by whoever is playing this flute. We are trying to track it down. Summoning a Spectre with a flute? Huh, absolutely preposterous. We distinctly heard a lovely melody when the Spectre last appeared. We believe that there is definitely a connection between the two. I don't know anything about a flute. Now please leave. Ariana, people are in danger. If you know anything, please tell us. I'm a witch. I bring disaster to those around me. If you remain here, disaster will find you as well. What are you talking about? Go! Why are you doing this, Ariana? We both know you're not a witch. What? Hold on. Do you two know each other? Luke and I were friends. Before all this happened. Maybe I'm wrong about the time difference. Hmm. Ariana, we're still friends. I don't think you're a witch. <laughs> okay, I'm definitely wrong about the time difference. Adults talk about the most boring things, huh? don't you think? All they talk about is politics. And the weather, too. Yeah. Let's get out of here. <laughs> Wow! I know! Amazing, right? Mm-hmm. Looking up at the stars reminds me not to take things so seriously. Sometimes, the world can seem so big and scary. I know, but we're all so small when you think about it. I'm Ariana. Maybe you and I could be friends. Deal? Hmm. My name is Luke. Luke Trojan. Did you see that, Luke? Ah, <sighs> what did you wish for? Ariana, you're not a witch. Stop saying that. Luke, I am cursed. Everyone is right to fear me. Ariana! Go away! What is all this? How did you whippersnippers get in here? Miss Ariana, are you all right? So it's not a girl faking a bo uh, man's voice, it's a boy faking a man's voice. Out! All of you! Before I call your mummies and daddies! Emmy, Luke, come. Let's go. Looks like a good time for the first break. So, get up, stretch, whatever you need to do to be able to keep watching comfortably. And I will be right back. <laughs> 